fellas, it is time for NBA Showdown. Looking at the showdown contest for tomorrow's Olympic basketball semifinals. So the USA outlasted Spain now gets set to face off against Australia in the men's basketball semis. KD led the way in their win against Spain, but is he the right pick for captain for the U.S. in their semifinal matchup with the Aussies? What do you think here, Kenny? Well, look, we've said this before, and I've said this before, but I do think that you want to go cheaper at captain. I think you want to spend money, and I don't think that the difference between, uh, you know, the uh, guy like my captain, Bam Adebayo, at $9,300 is going to be that big of a difference over Kevin Durant or Damian Lillard. But I do think that this could be a top-heavy matchup. I do think that you do want Joe Ingles in this matchup. So I think if you save money – With Bam Adebayo, it's the way to go. And when you look at the Australian basketball team, their biggest issue is front court depth. No Aaron Baines here who's hurt. And I don't think that they're going to be able to contain any of the U.S. bigs. I think that the the strategy should be simple here, and it's to play in the post. So I think that Bam Adebayo, at the very least, should have an edge on the rebounding in the rebounding department. He should probably go for a double-double here. But if the U.S. was smart, I think they'd probably try to get some free points inside because this is a very weak front court for Australia. It's the way, it's the area to exploit. So I think the, whatever, the third time's a charm with captaining Bam Adebayo, I do think that it's going to pay off for you. Nick, Katie will cost you 14400 in the captain spot. Do you feel like you need to roster him as your captain? I don't know that you need to, but I'm fine doing that. I mean, he's the third most expensive captain option, which doesn't necessarily line up um, with, with what you think, but he's coming off of 44 and 45 DraftKings points in his last two games, really asserted himself uh, in, in that second quarter against Spain uh, the other night and, and kind of finally started to make this his team, which I think is very beneficial for Team USA and probably what they wanted to happen all along. But you can captain KD. You can still get Patty Mills in your lineup. You can still get Bam. You can still get Devin Booker. Uh, who's looked really good these last couple of games. And then you can kind of choose one of the mid-tier Team USA guys to fill it out. And I think Kenny's right about that line of thinking where, you know, Australia's strength is not inside, especially without Aaron Baines. I don't know that Team USA's is either. You know, Bam Adebayo should be able to take advantage, but, you know, it's not like he's 2002 Shaq and you're just going to toss him the ball on the block. He's going to drop, step, and dunk. Like, USA's strength is not exactly pounding the ball inside either. Uh, but I like the idea of Adebayo, you know, exploiting Jock Landale, who's probably going to play a lot of center um, for Australia in this game. And then, you know, rostering Jock Landale, who's pretty cheap for Australia on the other side to, to try to take advantage of both teams, I think, trying to pound the rock inside. All right. So while there are some familiar names on the Australian roster, they don't have the star power of the American squad. Granted, they do have Patty Mills, who has the most expensive salary on this slate, but you You have to play at least one player from the Australian team in this showdown contest. So, Nick, who do you like? And maybe is there more than one option here? Yeah, there are a few options. I mean, this isn't this. We talked about the Iranian national team last year, and and Kenny and I are kind of pulling names uh, out of thin air. But there's there's several names that NBA fans will recognize on this Australian team. You know, you mentioned Joe Ingles. I talked about Jock Landale, uh, who's at 3,400. He just signed uh, an NBA deal yesterday. Um, a guy who college basketball fans are certainly are familiar with. He had th- almost 35 DraftKings points in Australia's last game. Uh, of course, you can go with Patty Mills, uh, who's kind of the, the keystone for this Australia team, the newly minted uh, Brooklyn Nets guard. Matisse Thibel is on this Australian team. Josh Green, uh, who's going to enter his second year in the NBA. Uh, plenty of names that, that NBA fans will recognize. So you know, whether you want to go expensive or cheap, you'll at least have some familiarity with these guys. Kenny, what do you think? Uh, is there more than one option here? Yeah, I like Jock Landale. I actually think uh, there's a lot of great options here. Jock Landale is one. Uh, it might, you know, Dante Exum's played 21 minutes a game. He's only $2,800, and I think that his best game's to come. But if I have to give you one name that could be maybe a GPP guy, maybe someone to come out of nowhere, it's Chris Golding. He is an absolute legend in the national in the NBL, the National Basketball League. Um, playing for Melbourne United. This guy has had some incredible feats in the NBL that I've seen at 2 a.m. with my own eyes. And he's only $1,800 here. And the reason I bring him up is because look, the, the Australian team is not that deep. Uh, they are deeper at guard. But when you look at the fact that he played 14 minutes against Argentina, this could turn into somewhat of a, I don't know. I mean, if the U.S. goes up late, they could maybe put Chris Golding in. But I also think that the threes might not be falling for them and maybe they're going to decide to go with a shooter like Chris Golding. $1,800, I think this guy's very talented. He's a guy no one's going to know about, and you could get him into your lineup. But if I have to pick someone else, 
Um, it's probably going to be Dante Exum or Matisse Steibel coming off the good game. I think they're going to really want him out there for defense with all these dangerous perimeter players for the United States. Now let's talk about the other semifinal between France and Slovenia. Now, Kenny Luka Doncic has been a monster in this tournament. He seems like the obvious choice to captain in this game, but he's going to cost you. So is he your pick for this showdown or are you going to be looking elsewhere? I mean, this is like, this is outrageous, Jesse. He is $21,900 and the next most expensive guy is 14.7K. I'm going to go down two spots here because I want to get Luka. Uh, it, this is basically a one-man team, Slovenia. I want to get Luka Doncic on my team, but I'm going to captain Rudy Gobert to do it at 14.1K. Look, Rudy Gobert is a FIBA legend. We all know that the rules are different to benefit Rudy Gobert. It seems like they just made him to play in FIBA only. Um, he, he did miss out on a double-double last game, but I think that despite the fact that there is the presence there of a Mike Toby, I do think that Rudy Gobert should be able to dominate once again inside. Uh, he, he's had a lot of success internationally. He's had a lot of success in this tournament. I do realize that he had the two clunkers in the middle there, but great showing against USA, great showing against Italy um, in a very close game. I think this could be another close game, but judging by the spread, and Rudy Gobert should be front and center. I think he should have a good game. And you put him in your captain spot, then you can fit Luka Doncic and some of these other, you know, mid-tier to high-tier France guys in your lineup. So I like that. Yeah, Nick, is there just no way you can afford to roster Luka in your captain spot? I mean, if you're going to go that way, you need to hope that he has like a 75-plus DK point game, which he has done already in this tournament. I mean, he's one of the few players who's putting up similar DraftKings points totals to his NBA totals because the games are shorter, the scores are lower, you know, things are distributed typically a little bit more, but he, you know, these, these games are indistinguishable from the games that he was having uh, with the Dallas Mavericks. So if you want to chance it and go that way, you can, but of course you're going to have to take a chance on, you know, two guys at the end of your lineup who are basically minimum salary and, and might not give you anything. I think Kenny's on the right track. I mean, it could be Gobert, it could be Evan Fournier, it could be, um, Zoran Dragic, who had almost 50 DraftKings points, Goran Dragic's younger brother uh, in Slovenia's last game. Uh, Mike Toby, who college basketball fans probably remember from Virginia, uh, has been a key piece for them as well. So I, I think the smart move is to roster one of those second-tier guys who can still probably get you, you know, at worst, 25, 30 DraftKings points. Obviously, you're getting the one-and-a-half bonus. And then you're hoping that Luca still has a big game in the non-captain spot. All right, finally, let's take a look at the DK Sportsbook. Nick, tell us your favorite bet for the men's Olympic basketball semis. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a fairly close game against Australia. I, I think that that USA game against Spain was a little bit closer for a lot of that game than the final score indicated. I thought Ricky Rubio uh, gave Team USA a ton of trouble in that game. I, I'm looking at, you know, you, there's a ton of alternate spreads for this game on the DK Sportsbook. You can pretty much bet any number you want from Australia, you know, minus one all the way to USA minus 26. I, I think somewhere in like Australia plus 10, you know, maybe bet this up to, to plus money. Um, you can get that at plus 130. I think Team USA wins the game, but I don't think they do it comfortably. I mean, Australia is 3-0 and in this tournament. We've, we're talking about all the NBA talent that they have on that side. I think USA wins, but I, I think it comes by less than 10 points. Kenny, what about you? Favorite bet for the men's Olympic basketball semis? Yeah, I'm with Nick. I really do think that Australia covers here the plus 12. This is a very deep team. We mentioned Matisse Steibel, who, uh, you know, is, is really a depth piece, but going to be very important in this game, you know, throwing him on some of the talented United States wings. I also just think that this is a very top heavy United States team. As we talked about at times, you know, Bam Adebayo is the, the big man for them, but like, is he going to be good enough to really exploit that weakness up front for Australia? I don't think so. And, you know, at the other hand, we have a plenty of great shooters for Australia, Joe Ingles, Patty Mills. Um, and really, you know, Jason Tatum has been a big disappointment in, in international play. A lot of the scoring has gone away from, you know, the not Kevin Durant named guys. Devin Booker still trying to find himself. Chris Middleton had a moment. I think that this is uh, this is a team that is just not very strong and not as strong as we were used to seeing. So, I don't know if they're going to run away with this one. We saw it, the same thing uh, in the Czech Republic game. They really didn't even run away with that one until the very end. So, yeah, this could be a very close game. I like plus 12. I also like France money line plus 120. This is a very complete team. Good defense. They should do a good job on Luka Doncic. 